Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to MacArthur Industries here with young Sean from SPV Batteries. We've uh, done one video today and we've chatted about the hybrid range, but what we're going to do is look at the deep cycle range here in Victor. Um, what we want to go to is about the battery, but more some of the stuff around those batteries, sizes they're coming in, expectations of charge rates into them, because some people out there of their thoughts of what can go into them and what can't go into them. It's a bit of an open world discussion where they're not going to the source of the battery, they're going to a professional that sometimes hasn't had the industry knowledge. So we want to be able to give that to you guys today to talk about that. So let's have a chat today, Sean. One, got the conversations we're looking at today, probably the, the main unit we see a lot of, that 100 amp hour on that sort of things. Coming to 125 as well. 200 and 300, is that okay? But there's a lot of other ones. There's a, there's a few smaller sizes smaller that we do as well. Um, we are actually about to release uh, 150 amp in a slimline case as well. Okay. Um, so obviously some caravans, canopies, things yes. like that that are a bit tight on space. Yes. Um, we're going to be bringing that out very soon as well. All got Bluetooth at this area. So we do some models without Bluetooth, but yes. they're all available in Bluetooth as well. Yes. Um, obviously monitoring lithium has always been a bit of a, a, a stick point for a lot of people yeah, trying right. to do a, a retrofit. Yes, yes. Um, a voltage gauge as we all know is, is irrelevant these days with lithium because it yes. holds its voltage till near the end before it falls away. Yes. Um, an aftermarket, a good quality aftermarket, you know, yes. lithium monitor can cost a fair whack of money, whereas the Bluetooth generally 50 bucks dearer than a, the base model without the Bluetooth. So. so with this in charging systems, like when we speak to our clients, we are lithium compliant. Like the best to get the best out of that battery Absolutely. is making sure you've got something that's charging lithium. So when we speak about that, when we get into our biggest sections where we're starting to run two or three 200s and stuff like that, and we're running big systems and stuff like that, some people are asking me what the valuation or what charge a battery, say, let's say a, a 200 amp hour lithium battery, what's your specific mindset around that? Are you looking at 40 amps, you're looking at 60 amps, you're looking at 80 amps, where, where are you at with that? What can they? In all honesty, a lot of the limitation around charging a big lithium battery is the size of the charger available. Yes. I mean, even this smaller unit here in the 100 amp, that'll handle 80 amps of charge constant. Yes. So, uh, but yeah. obviously, as we all know on the market, one of the biggest BCDCs you're going to get is around the 50 mark. Yes. And we've, we've spoken to our clients about that, and that's about why I want to bring that into your attention today is a lot of people speak about these batteries and say, okay, this is the biggest 50 amp, but if you set your systems up right with solar and DC to DC, you can start to get that out of that scenario where you're having both in at the same time. So think about that when you're setting these systems up for that, guys. The other big advantage too with that, even though the BCDC, even at 50 amps, it's it's still gonna boost the whole way as opposed to going through boost, absorption, float mode. And yes. It's those last two settings that generally take a lot longer anyway. So yes. with a 50 amp charger, you can charge this from dead flat to full in around two hours yes. if your alternator and charger have the output, so. And that's the lithium thing that we speak about. And I know there's been a lot in the marketplace about it, is the charging capabilities of a lithium in time limits. Absolutely. A massive difference from a solar system to having the right regulation and also having the right DC to DC charger out there and charging it. So in your industry knowledge of what you've done, what's like, say you had a 100 amp hour AGM battery down at what we'd say around the 30% and having this down at 30%, what, what are they talking about time limit difference in that? Look, I mean, if you're, if you're running, say, with the lithium, you've got a 50 amp charger, you're down to 30%, you're, you're well under two hours to fully charge that. Yes. With, a, with an AGM, which, which we sell AGM as yes. well. We're, you know, we're, we're not biased. It's just unfortunately the science of it. Yes. Traditionally with an AGM, you don't want any more than 30% charge rate to start with. So yes. 100 amp AGM, if you've yes. got more than a 30 amp charger, you're risking damaging the plates, reducing the life of the battery. So you've already got a smaller charger you need to with that. Plus yes. you've got that boost absorption float. You could be looking eight to 12 hours to fully charge that battery. And we're seeing this. We're seeing it a lot in the marketplace when people go to this lithium, they can't believe when they go and put it in where they looked at they'll be getting to 100% later in the day, and they're coming to you at 10.30 in the day, 11 o'clock, going, hey guys, I'm up at 100%. And they thought there was a problem with their system, but it's conversation, it's just the setup of having such a good battery in there. The amount of people who almost don't believe the numbers and because it has charged so fast and efficiently, yeah. they're, they're genuinely shocked. Yeah, so guys, have a think about it. Um, we endorse the Invicta range quite heavily, fit a lot of it on that sort of things. Like we did, we've spoken about the hybrid today, which being we use a lot in the vehicle sense on that sort of things, with having the opportunity to have a start feature in it. Got 80% of that there, and then you've got the deep cycle factor. We've just sort of got one of the ones pulled apart here with a BMS unit. Just want to have one last thing that I know that the marketplace probably doesn't allow for where I see a lot of lithium batteries come through 
Invicta range with certification. I just wanted to bring that up today, Absolutely. which so we know when we're looking at insurances on caravans and motorhomes, insurances on cars and stuff like that, if something had a personality problem where it can't be pointed in the right direction. So can you bring and talk to us about that? Tr traditionally, I mean, you mentioned certification. It's yes. obviously a big thing. What, what most people will do in the industry is they will have a single cell. Yes. and that will have its certification, yes. which is great. That means the cell's safe, it, it, it ensures quality, um, capacity, those sort of things, which is yep. great. But that certification doesn't cover this cell now linked up with this cell, this cell, this cell. It doesn't factor in that yes. particular BMS, yep. nothing to do with cabling. Yes. So that certification, while it's great on a single cell, doesn't cover anything else. Yes. We've gone one step further. We've actually certified the battery as a whole in that case with that BMS, with that wiring, yes. not only to ensure obviously safety, which is a primary concern, but that certification also guarantees our 100 amp hour is actually 100 amp hour usable. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we are the only business in the country I'm aware of that have that level of IEC certification. Yes. Um, and that's also be, obviously be part of our extended warranty because we know that every battery coming out of that factory yes. Has to be built like that because that factory gets audited constantly as well. So, which is good to know, which is great to know. So, guys, I'm not going to go in about cycles and rates and everything like that. You can jump on the Invicta Lithium site, it's got everything in there. It's got some great videos as well that you guys have already done. It was more just an overview so you knew what's happened. Thank you very, very much for your time, mate. Right? I really appreciate it. Have a great day and we'll speak to you soon. Any of this sort of stuff, jump down. Any questions, I can reach out to Sean if you've got any information, you want any more of it as well. See you later. Thanks very much and bye.